This is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Today we're going to learn about dyeing fiber with Dharma Dyes. Today we're going to be dyeing Alpaca Blend Roving with the colors of Fawn, Sage Leaf, and Peach Blush. The first thing I like to do is weigh the fiber so that I know how much I'm working with. Dyeing involves a heating process and I like to use the Farberware electric skillet because it's shallow enough that you can see all your fiber and lay it in there nice and organized and then have complete control of the temperature and it's easy to keep an eye on it. So the first thing you wanna do after your fiber's in the pan is just pour some warm water over the fiber and let it start soaking. This helps open up the fiber so it's more receptive to the dye. You want just enough water and just barely cover the top of the fiber. Okay, now comes the fun part with mixing the dyes, but a note of caution, the dye dust is very dangerous to be inhaled, so always wear a dust mask, which I'm wearing in this, you just can't see it. Um, if you have any lung issues, asthma or allergies, then wear a respirator. Do it away from food. Um, I do it in the far corner of my kitchen and I keep everything as closed as I can. As you see, I'm closing the lids. Um, also use plastic ware that you would never use to eat with. Keep everything completely separate. I do rewash the plastic ware so I can use it every time I'm dying and that I'm not wasting. I put a little bit of water in each cup, maybe half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. And then as you can see with the spoons, I had a very little bit of dye on the tip of the spoon. So I would say that was maybe half a teaspoon of dye um, I'm not, I'm an enthusiast, not an exact person. I am going on what I've watched others do and it's worked. Um, I mix up the dye so that it's all liquid. And then after it's mixed, I add the vinegar to the cups. Plain white generic vinegar will do. It's the acid that's needed to set the process. I pour about a quarter to a third of a cup, or as you can see in those plastic glasses, it's a little bit less than half. I stir it up and then it's ready to be poured on the fiber. Okay, here we go. Now it's getting really fun. You can do whatever you want. So that's the joy of it. You can buy the colors you want, you can mix them how you want, and you can lay them out however you like. Uh, the one thing I don't do inside the house is sprinkle the fiber because I don't want any of the chemical molecules to float around my kitchen. Um, I've heard of people doing it outside uh, with a salt shaker, and I'm sure there's many other methods, but I do not do that inside. Um, so right now, just you pour the fiber on wherever you like, in whatever design you want to, and then use a spoon to mix it in. I've also seen some of my friends use syringes to pull up some of the liquid and then reinsert that liquid underneath all the fiber to make sure that the fiber on the bottom is also getting it. I've not had an issue with it not getting it, but there's, you can do it any way you like. And that's all there is to it. Now there's a couple of tips. If you're gonna do separate colors, then I would just put the vinegar in the cups like you saw demonstrated. That way, when you pour it on, the vinegar is just right where the dye is. However, if you're doing a pan of all of one color, you can add the vinegar straight to the pan. And then when the dye is added, it will mix evenly throughout and reach all of your fiber. Now that the dye is all in, look it over, see if it's the way you like it. Uh, there's a few light spots there, so I wanted to kind of mix the dye water over it so that I wouldn't have white spots in that fiber. So you just kind of go over it and, and adjust it how you like. You can add a little more dye here and there and get it just the way you want it. Turn the electric skillet on to 200 and stand by. Don't leave it. Then wait and watch for the bubbles. Once you've got the bubbles, the fiber and the water is at a nice temperature, turn it back to warm, put the lid on it, set your timer for 20 minutes, and continue to stand by and monitor it. Every few minutes you can check with a white spoon to see if the fiber has absorbed the dye. This happened very quickly in this project today. 
Uh, you can see already that the water is clear, which means that the dye struck and it's all in the fiber. So it's able to come out and be rinsed. Another quick tip before rinsing is that your supplies for fiber and dyeing should be designated as so and only used for fiber and dyeing. For rinsing, have your colander ready to go. And as we saw before, all the water was clear, so we were ready to rinse. So I make sure the water's warm enough that I can touch. Uh, the fiber's pretty hot, and um, I don't want to shock it either way, so it's just nice warm water. I don't touch it too much. I don't want it to felt, but rinse it off. Stick it in the nice salad spinner. This really helps get a lot of the water out. Do that as many times as you want. And you'll see how much water did come out. And then you can do it again. Now I just lay it all out on my drying rack to dry. And that's it. You have some beautiful dyed fiber. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.